All right, in the home stretch, it's time to add an in-slide audio, text, and a final outro video. In this video, I'll show how I add these elements to prepare for the next video or end the series. Okay, so in the last video, I covered synchronizing some arrows with some ovals and text. I'm going to have to do another video later on about the larger graphics, which really aren't a problem. Nobody, that, that shouldn't really need a whole lot of explanation. So when I come to the end of my presentations, there are two different ways that I handle that. The first way is that the end portion that will introduce the next video or end a series or just end the video period is actually recorded in the audio. When the ending is actually part of my primary audio file, I go ahead and mark that last paragraph, which is going to end the video or the series or introduce the next video. I have an end slide and I'm going to drop that into the graphics line. And then I'm going to go ahead and size that for the duration of that particular portion. All right, so once I have that in there, then I'm going to go to my title and section title, and I've handled these in two different ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a title here. And with my title templates, I would have already had this in here, except this one, I'm gonna left align that. This is gonna be a 48. And I'm just gonna type the word. Or it could be anything. And I may or may not have a semicolon. So then I'm gonna go ahead and position that where I want it, which is usually about right here. And again, this is something that you'll have to work out with your own layout and design. I'm going to add a motion to that. I like to do that because when these things come in, and before I set the duration on that, I'm going to go ahead and size that out to match the length of the clip there. So now I'm going to go back in and I can size this and I'll go to my three dots. There they are. Now what happens is when this comes in, when the slide comes up, this isn't just going to just pop there, which is kind of abrupt. It's going to fade in. It's going to be a fast fade, but it's going to be a, a fade in. All right, so now I'm going to go to my title track and I'm going to add a title here. And again, if I was creating the title templates, this would have already been sitting there and I would change the font. Again, I'm going to go to a 48. And I'm going to put in the title. Of the next video. And I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to size that to the duration. And then I will go ahead and put a motion in and time that for the duration that I want. And I'll slide this over because I don't want the title to come in until I'm actually saying the title. In our next and final lesson in this series, we'll discuss... the sabbath day what it okay and i need to position that and if i put that frame right there i don't have my grid up i know i can align it right there and that's pretty much going to be an alignment if i had my grid there i could turn the grid on and make sure i've done this with two series now so i know that's going to work so that's going to be okay now the the option is i might have the title fade in right after the word next or with the word next, it depends. 
And that's just a matter of, of choice. So then, if I want to play that in there, let me go ahead and I'm going to back up right here to the end of the previous title. Sacrifice for sin for all time. Today, there's confusion about when we should worship and why there's a difference between our... Okay, that next came in a little too slow, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and take that out. I'm going to, I'm going to let it just pop in. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. It's just a matter of how long this title is. Uh, and that could be a render delay as well. All right, so let me go back here. Let's go back a second or two. And a lot of this is just going to be preference. But the preference needs to be based on what is going to look good, what's going to work. For sin for all time. Today, there's confusion about when we should worship. In our next and final lesson in this series, we'll discuss the Sabbath day, what okay. it meant. It's all right. So that timed in. So I would leave that right there. So that would be my ending sequence. I'm going to go to the very end and I'm going to go to on most of my videos. Now I, it says intro, outro. I didn't put intro, outro. I just put intro. Now, my outro is a short video that I created for the purpose of ending the individual videos and things like that. It's for the entire channel. So, and most people, I think, have that. So, I'm going to drop that in. And then, what we can do is take a look at that. Its significance then, and what it means for us now. Okay, and then the outro plays. And Now, the only thing that I've done in the past is, let's say that, I take a look at this, and once this title comes in, I might center that. It just depends, and I can use the center marks here to kind of line it up. There it is. Okay. And th it, this is just a matter of adjusting and taking a look and seeing what's going to really work or what's going to look the best. There isn't any right or wrong. It's just a matter of preference and whether or not it really does work. Some things aren't going to work. It doesn't matter how you arrange them. They're just not going to work. So let's see. Discuss the Sabbath day, what it meant, its significance then, okay. and what it means for us now. All right. So that works a little bit better. That keeps the attention and the focus to the center of the screen. The word next is going to kind of be a little distracting there for a second, but when the title comes in, I don't have to look to the left. It's going to be right in the center because the graphics are going to be kind of an attention uh, grabber, hopefully, as well. All right, so this is the last video that I did under 16. This was 16 part three. And for this series of videos, the ending that's going to either end the series or introduce the next video is a separate file. And what I did was I recorded all of the intros to the videos at the very beginning so that I would have them. So I have a short intro for each video. And I figured I'm going to save some time because I'm going to use the intro for the next video as the end of the previous video. And that just saves some time. So this is the end of the video, and I did capture this with OBS, and then I rendered it in Premiere Pro uh, to take out a lot of stuff that didn't need to be there, and it still ran a little bit on the, on the long side. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the very end of that. And since I have a pre-recorded intro for that, I want that on my audio line. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that in there, and that should introduce the next one, which is the one I'm working on, 
All right, in the home stretch. Yeah, that's it. Kind of cheesy, but it's okay. All right. Now, I'm going to go to my graphics line. And for this, for this series, I created a graphic. And it's the same graphic as the beginning introduction. But it has the word next on it. So this is my next graphic. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that there. I've already marked the end of the audio, and that was easy. All I had to do was play the audio. When it comes to an end, it's the end of the video. There wasn't anything else there, so all I had to do is drop a marker in. So all I have to do now is just get the playhead out of the way and stretch this out. So now I have the word next, and I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go to my title and drop a title in. And I think I went with a 36 on this. Yeah, we go ahead and type the title in here. Gonna go ahead and give that yellow is what I've been using. Okay, I think I'm gonna keep it at 16 right now. Again, if I had my grid here, I would use that. I've been doing pretty good without the grid here. And for these, I've been putting a motion in, and I'm gonna bring this in at the beginning of the of the end there. So I'm going to stretch that out so I can time it properly. And I'm going to do this. And that should bring it in fairly well. All right, so let me go back here and I can play that and see how it looks. All right, in the home stretch, it's time to add an in-slide audio tech. All right, let me start right at the very end of the video sequence and we can see how it comes in. All right, in the home stretch. Right. It kind of missed. Let me go back a little bit farther so I want to see. All right. I'm ready to move on to the next one. All right, in the home stretch, it's time to add in. All right, now that's not too bad. I think what I'm going to do is go in here and lengthen this duration here just a little bit, make it look a little smoother. To the next one. All right, in the home stretch, That's a it's better. time to add an in-slide audio text and a final outro. And this is off just a little bit, and this is where the grid would come in, so I might adjust that up a little bit. Usually I can eyeball it and do pretty good with it. Sometimes I can't. It's hard to do a lot with the... Uh, That might work. Okay. All right. So I would probably have a grid or something, turn it on, line that up, make sure everything's in alignment. I would adjust that until I had it right. When I'm ready, I'm going to go and click on my intro, outro track. Make sure I click over here to deselect that title. And then I'm going to go to my outro. This is for the channel here and drop it in. So now, prepare for the next video or end the series. All right. Okay, so that really looks pretty good. It's timed well and everything. 
I do want to show one other way that I have been doing some of the endings, and I don't have a script prepared. Let me see if I can. Okay, so this one here at the very end, I have the graphic for the end slide, and I have the title here. Now, what I did for the title on this one is I actually have a graphic that I created. What I did was when I created this graphic for the thumbnails for this series, this graphic and the lettering are on a are on a layer. The background is on another layer and the word next and the ellipsis or whatever there is on another layer. So what I did was I could turn off next, export these as thumbnails. Then I could turn off next and the background and I exported just the title. So at the end, what I did was I could bring in just the graphic and then I could import the title, drop it in place and time it. And the title's really kind of small there. I was kind of, that was a, an, ex, an experiment, but since I went ahead and did the entire series, that's how I did that. So you can do that too. You can bring in the title. You could even have an end slide with the title already on it and bring the whole thing in. It doesn't matter. So this is just how I do it. It depends on how flexible you want it to be. And then the same process is there at the end of that last paragraph that is either ending the series or is introducing another video in the series. I'm going to go ahead and drop that in and at the end of it, then I can go ahead and play my outro, which is the same one that I had before. So, so that's pretty much how that can be done. You can be pretty flexible with it. And then this way, this ends everything. So when all of this is done, it's really time to go ahead and export that. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about the initial export and what I do to prepare for a final render. And that has to do with proofing it. And I'm going to be looking for all kinds of things and straightening things out before I get a final version. So that'll be in the next one. The project is complete and I'm ready to render a final product. Before I consider the job finished, I'll render the project and then review it in a video player to check for needed correction.